Come on up here, brother. Introduce your family. I, I'm sorry I forgot all the kids. <laughs> Was your wife named Sarah? Sarah. Sarah. I yeah. got Sarah. Yeah, All right. Sarah. And then he started eeny, meeny, miny, and mo down through here. And I said, oh, no, I'll let you do that. Is Amen. it okay if we sing a chorus? Hey, you can sing. Yes, sir. You do whatever you want to. It's I'm yours. My, appreciate it, Pastor Johnson. Right. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir, brother. I'm going to invite my family to come up now as they work their way up here. We are the Nathan Sarah Ring family. We've been in Brazil serving the Lord since 2014. So this is our second furlough, our second time back in the States since then. I'm going to invite the kids up so you can see them all. And I'm going to tell you something. Unfortunately, or however it is, missionary kids are not born saved. I was a missionary kid. I grew up in Brazil, and I wasn't born saved, but I praise God for the ones that have placed their faith in Christ already. And let, yeah, let's step down. I think that'll be easier so that we can get everybody here. I'll introduce everybody. We're going to sing a song to you in English and in Portuguese. We have um, been in Brazil, as I said, since 2014. We're sent out a Fellowship Baptist Church in Taylor, South Carolina. It's pastor uh, by Pastor Rick Party Jr. And uh, we're counted a privilege to be able to be sent out directly out of that church. So not only is our, our sending church, but our sending agency. And I appreciate Pastor Johnson the opportunity to be here. I'd like to share with you what we've been doing over the last few years. Um, this presentation is geared to a lot of our supporting churches, so some of the things I'll try to add, some of the details, give you some more information. We have prayer cards, and I'll try to hang around the back at the table afterwards. If you've got questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Um, but we want to share what the Lord's been doing there in southern Brazil. So I'm going to turn this on. If we can get the lights, I will step down. Let's see if we can get this to work. Brazil is about as big as the United States is east to west. Brazil is north to south. So we're way down south in Brazil, city of Porto Alegre. It would be like driving from here in Lawrence to California to get to the Amazon River way up in the north. That's about how far away we are from the Amazon region. But Porto Alegre is a city of about 2 million people, and it's the capital of the southernmost state, Rio Grande do Sul, in southern Brazil. Uh, when we went to Brazil in 2014, my wife and I had two little boys, and she was expecting our first daughter. And thank the Lord, 
Now you see the updated picture there. Once again, just the names are Mordecai is our oldest, and then Micaiah, Mariah, Nate, Nate, Isaac, and Mercy, and my wife, Sarah, and I want to share with you our salvation testimonies. I grew up in Brazil. My parents, Mike and Tammy Ring, are veteran missionaries in Brazil, been there over 30 years now, and uh, grew up in the same region of Brazil where we are working with the Gauchos. But it wasn't until I was 18 years old, I was enrolled in Bible college, that I realized I had never personally accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I knew all the facts, knew all the verses, but praise the Lord, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tells us that the summing up the gospel is that Christ died according to the scriptures for our sins. And I realized that day I needed Christ as my Savior as an 18-year-old, and I placed my faith in Christ, thankful for his salvation. My wife, Sarah, grew up in a single-parent home in North Carolina and uh, came to know Jesus Christ as her Savior at the age of 14 at a teen camp. And uh, the Lord just worked in her heart, and we met at Bible College. We were married at Fellowship Baptist Church, gr began our family there, and the Lord sent us out of fellowship in 2012 on deputation. 2014, we made it to the field of uh, Brazil. Uh, we are working at Biblical Faith Baptist Church. This is a church plant the Lord allowed us to get started in um, 2015 on Mother's Day. So we're coming up on eight years since the church uh, started officially with a sign out front. Before that, it was just a Bible study in a home. But we believe strongly in the local church and the importance of spreading the gospel through a local church. And so we, we're working here at Biblical Faith Baptist Church. We've also done some furlough replacement for my, my parents last in 2019, 2020, as well as working at, at our church, and that's just a picture there. Uh, we work with the gauchos. Now, the gauchos, that's a term that's used, the Brazilian cowboy, but literally anybody born in the state of Rio Grande do Sul is concert, considered a gaucho, whether they're a lawyer or whether they're a doctor or whether they're a construction worker. And uh, so, uh, but the culture has its roots in the fields and the cattle and the, and the agricultural. And this is just, this is one of their parades there and the statue off to the right. If you were to come to visit us, you'd see it right as you come into the airport there in Port Alegre. One of the big ministries the Lord's given us over the last few years has been with the children. The Lord has opened the doors even when COVID put a lot of restrictions on on certain things there in Brazil, we're still able to connect and minister to children, and we believe that the gospel and sharing the gospel with these children is key. So it's our Sunday school uh, outreach here as we bring them in on Sundays, and many of these children, their parents are in drugs and all kinds of things, not interested in the things of the Lord, but we thank the Lord for the opportunity to share the gospel with the children. The gospel is the only hope for the future. We can feed them and clothe them and help them, and we try where we can, but they need Jesus Christ. And we ask that you pray for the children there in Porto Alegre, in the neighborhood where we're at. It's called Lami. That's L-A-M-I, Lami. And these children, they live on many little narrow passageways where you've got drugs going on, you've got drug cartels, you've got prostitution rings, you've got all kinds of crime going on. And these children come on Sundays and hear the gospel and many of them have placed their faith in Christ or they understand the gospel and still haven't trusted in Christ and we're praying the Lord would allow us to make a difference in eternity and long term in that community by leading these children to Jesus Christ. We also do with soccer outreach. Soccer is a big thing in Brazil so we made ourselves some little goals and this has been an outreach that's led to children coming and then Consequently, they've come to the, the Sunday school ministries and other ministries as well. Um, we also, as I mentioned, the missionaries' children are not saved. And uh, we, we work with that in mind, and our ministry is our children, our family. And we, as we're ministering to the Brazilians, we also ministering to them. Mordecai accepted Christ as Savior, Micaiah and Mariah, and they have followed the Lord in believer's baptism. We're thankful for that. And Nate Nate's made a profession of faith, and we're praying for the twins. And so, Isaac and Mercy, appreciate your prayers for our family, for the children, as we're ministering there. Here are some pictures of the inside of our church over the last couple years, different outreaches, services, special music, and so forth there at the church. One of the biggest blessings for a missionary, and I believe for your pastor or for any believer, is to see folks not only accept Christ, but to make a commitment publicly and follow the Lord in believer's baptism. 
And these are folks that accepted Christ and were baptized in 2022, most of them. And uh, just a, a blessing to our hearts to see these folks come to know Christ as Savior. I want to share a, a very specific story, a way the Lord has just kind of given us an inroads to share the gospel. In 2018, my wife and I found out we were expecting uh, twins, and we had a seven-seater vehicle with four kids. That pushed us to eight, and we didn't fit the vehicle anymore. In Brazil, it's hard to find an a eight-seater minivan, and once you get past that size, you've got to get a CDL to drive this van right here. And so I went to driving school, got a CDL in Brazil so I could drive a, a bigger van. And the Lord led us to this, to this van. And the van had some mechanical issues, which led us to the mechanic shop you see there, Alto Longarina. And while they were fixing the van, the, the owner found out I was a missionary, and we started talking about the Bible. And he asked if I would come and do a Bible study at the mechanic shop. So since October of 2020 to current, we are doing a Bible study on a weekly basis at the end of the, of, the, of the day, usually on Tuesday or Wednesday night. We will come out and they set up chairs right there in the shop. And we started with a, a study, a chronological Bible study, we call it, from creation to Christ and sharing the gospel with them. And just one by one, the Lord worked. And most of these folks were involved in a, in a cult called shamanism which is going back to the shaman, the witch doctor of the, of the Indians and so forth. And they had just really delved into that spirit worship. And what we did is we started presenting the gospel, presenting starting with the fall of man, the need for a savior, and all through the Old Testament, the, pro, the prophecies about Christ and his coming, and then the gospel, and then Christ's death and burial and resurrection. And one by one, we saw multiple people at the mechanic shop come to know Christ as Savior. I want to show you some of them. Tiago and Hicarginho are two of the mechanics that were working at the shop. They accepted Christ as Savior um, about a year ago, and Tiago was living with a woman, and she, he realized he needed to get his situation right, and he got legally married to her. We were able to be witnesses at the notary office there. And then this is just a picture at the river. Uh, our city is along the Guaiba River, and so several of them were baptized there. Carla, Liz, Chiago, Hicarginho, Gabriel, and Hiki, Ricardo. Right in the middle, the middle picture there is Gabriel. He's the owner of the mechanic shop. What a blessing. We, we're, we have now, I think, eight adults that have accepted Christ as Savior, either work at the shop, owners, relatives of people from that mechanic shop. Here's another young man got saved at the mechanic shop. His name is Ricardo. Ricardo, because of his testimony on social media, a former worker of his named Wagner, who's sitting down beside me, uh, reached out to him and asked him questions about the gospel. And Hikardo and I were able to lead Wagner to the Lord. And he's done a Bible study with him as well. And so just a blessing to see them not only following the Lord in baptism, but also spreading the gospel. Hikardo met his wife. She worked at the mechanic shop where we've been doing the Bible study. And they were married last year. In um, July, we were able to do our first wedding at our church there in Brazil, and they're actually filling in for us in our absence as lay leaders there at the church in, um, in, in uh, Biblical Faith Baptist Church. This is a picture of the van, and, and I like to say God uses broken things. I'm a broken person. I'm imperfect, but praise God for His grace and His mercy. And with the exception of the young lady with the yellow on her jacket kind of towards the back there, all these folks are folks that came to know Jesus Christ as Savior because of a broken down van and a Bible study that was started at a mechanic shop. Well, praise the Lord for that. Here's another man in our church, Edson. Uh, he accepted Christ as Savior after a really serious motorcycle accident. And uh, we're just praying for his wife, Selene. She hasn't accepted Christ yet as Savior. Here are two young ladies that came to Christ. Vanessa, the blonde on the far left lost both her parents to COVID over the last couple of years. And because of that, we were able to, to meet her and, and see her come to Christ and, and Nayad as well. Just pray for these young ladies that they would grow, um, grow spiritually. Um, this is just a picture. We, we purchased a what used to be a dance hall, and you can see that the transformation that's occurred over time. We've been able to transform it into a, a building, and I'm just praying the Lord will allow us to fill each one of those chairs with people who can come to know Christ as Savior. Share a few prayer requests as we're here. The only way that's possible is because we have men filling in the gap in our absence and thankful for Brazilians, Brazilians that have stepped up and 
this man Gilberto, the Bible study that became Biblical Faith Baptist Church was started in his mother's home. And now he is teaching our Thursday night midweek Bible study. And Hikaru and Carol, there's the couple that were, they met at the mechanic shop. He got saved there and they got married last year. They're leading our church. They're in charge of the Sunday school, the prayer meeting, the outreach. And he even this year actually has started preaching the, the adult services um, in, in, uh, with also some assistance from some Brazilian pastors. But just a blessing to see their last name is Lechi. I don't know how many of you drink milk, but when you pull that gallon of milk out, lechi means milk. And so if you could think of the, the milk family there in Brazil, southern Brazil, just pray for them that God would continue to, to use them. I spoke with them even last night. My wife and I were talking with them, and they just have a desire to serve the Lord. He believes the Lord's called them into full-time ministry. And we're praying as we go back as missionaries, our idea is to work alongside them and see them take this work and then go across town. The mechanic shop is about an hour and a half from where our church is at and start a work if the Lord would allow us with that group of believers that have been doing a Bible study at the mechanic shop. These are some Brazilian pastors that have helped out over the, our furlough. We've been on the state since August and we return in August of this year. So these are folks that are helping out with our preaching time, some besides Ricardo. These are pictures of, of people there connected to the church that we've seen come to the Lord or that are attending and still need Christ. And um, just a prayer request, we ask everyone as we're working as missionaries, we realize the importance of being God-controlled and not human-controlled, that we would walk with an open hand and just do things as the Lord sees fit. That's our prayer request for us and Nathan and Sarah ring family and the prayer card there are on the back we'd ask you if you would to take one and pray for us we appreciate so much the opportunity to share with you what the Lord is doing there in southern Brazil Let's see if I can now pastor didn't give me a time so I guess we don't I don't know what you what the time is but I want to uh, give you a chance if you have questions afterwards I will stand there in the back and, and take any questions but we are um, church planting missionaries with a burden to continue to church plant the intention is not to stay at one place for the rest of our lives if the Lord does that um, that's fine too but uh, as we see that church that I share with you biblical faith Baptist Church as it grows and they're they're taking care of the work as we're away it's just a, such a blessing to see them doing that our burden is to walk alongside with them a little longer as the Lord tarries and gives us opportunity to see that couple, Hikaru and Carol, take the work and then go and start another work. And as the Lord tarries, just keep doing that. And I'm just so thankful for how the Lord has worked. I could not have come up with that mechanic shop idea on my own. There's no way you can cook up something like that. The Lord just directed and worked and in, in the situation in Brazil in connection with COVID, we had restrictions up until July of last year. You had to wear masks in public and all these restrictions and stuff. The mechanic shop, they didn't care. You come every week. And so we had the sign. They let me put a sign out front of the shop and we would invite. We had owners from mechanic shops and, and other clients and other people come in. It had just been a blessing to see the Lord work there alongside with the, with the, um, the Bible, the Biblical Faith Baptist Church. If you take your Bibles this evening, I would like to, to share a brief challenge from God's words, Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and, and verse number 7 is where we'll start this evening, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7, verse 7 until verse number 11. Philippians chapter 3, verses verse 7 to 11. It says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. 
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we take a moment and we look into your word this evening, would you open our hearts and our eyes to what you have for us? Lord, would you allow your word to touch our hearts and the needs we have? You know the specific needs of each person here. Pray if there's someone here under the sound of my voice does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, you touch their hearts. They would see their need and today they would turn to you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to open your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Brazil, we have things called chujus and churrascos, and, and we have guaraná and cafezinhos and moranga and uh, moranga caramelizada. All these are things that you live without. You don't even know that you need them or that you would like them because you've never heard of them. But you know what? When we talk about the person of Jesus Christ, one of the things that I've found out is that people have no interest in Jesus until they realize that he has something to offer that they cannot find anywhere else. Until they understand that the person of Jesus Christ makes all the difference in the world. And how will they know that Jesus Christ can make that difference, has something to offer them that they can't find anywhere else? unless someone goes and shares Jesus Christ with them. As you look at this passage here, the question I want to pose to you this evening is, what do you have to gain with Jesus Christ? What do you gain by having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? You know, oftentimes when, when you start sharing the gospel with someone, in our part of Brazil we have a lot of Catholicism, that is the state religion, but more than that in, in our area specifically is what we call spiritism. The chicken sacrifices, and in many cases it's kind of similar to voodoo and things you hear about in Haiti. A lot of mediums and all this kind of stuff going on. And when you talk to people about Jesus, they say, oh, we believe in Jesus. But when you start listening to what they're saying and comparing to the scriptures, their Jesus is not the same one of the scriptures. The Jesus of the Catholics is not the same one of the scriptures. But you know what? Even in a Bible-believing church where the Jesus of the Bible is preached, I found sometimes people don't have a relationship with him. They hear about it. That was my case until I was 18 years old. I heard about Jesus. I knew facts, but I didn't have a personal relationship with him. Why would a person, happy with their current situation, change or be interested in adding to their life a relationship with Jesus Christ? I'd like to share just three thoughts with you out of this passage here, Philippians chapter 3. You look at verse number 9, Paul speaks, he says, being found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The first thing that Jesus Christ offers to us is a right standing with God. You can't get it anywhere else. You cannot have a righteous standing, a correct standing, a, an acceptable standing before God in and of your own strength. And Paul says, it's not my righteousness. It's not my righteousness. It's the righteousness, notice this phrase here, it's by faith. It's by faith in Christ. Praise God that we can place our faith in Christ. We can turn from our sins and repentance, place our faith in Christ, and we can be declared righteous. We can be made right with God. You know, if there was nothing else that Jesus Christ had to offer us but a right standing with God, it would be worth considering having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And oftentimes people say, well, I understand Jesus Christ can make me right with God, but then i got to keep doing and doing and doing and doing it to be right. In, in Brazil, we also have a lot of the Pentecostal movement, and we have a lot of Assembly of Gods and churches of that, that, that stripe, I guess you'd say. And yet the Bible tells us Jesus Christ on the cross, the last two words he said, or last phrase he said, it is finished. It's paid for in full. And so the righteousness of God can be the first and probably the, the greatest thing we see as an important reason to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you want to be right with God today? Yeah. You need Jesus. You want to stay right with God today if you already know him as Savior, you need Jesus. Jesus Christ makes us have the possibility of a right relationship with God. You know, it's not performance. It's not things we do that makes us stay right with God. We don't earn it. We don't earn salvation. We don't earn a right standing with God. Jesus Christ earned it for us on the cross. Praise God. Here we see that one of the reasons a person should have a relationship with Jesus Christ is because Jesus makes us right with God. But it doesn't stop there. It goes beyond. In verse number 10, he says, that I may know him. 
A relationship with Jesus Christ is essential because you can have an intimate relationship with the person of God. You can know your creator God. You can know the God who not only created you, but is sovereign, desires to have an eternal relationship with you. This knowing God is, is more than just like a head knowledge. It's a heart knowledge. It's a knowledge of, of God that is personal, that's experiential. Paul says, my desire is to be right with God through Christ, and Christ can make me right with God. My desire is to know God, and I can only know God through Jesus Christ. You see in verse number 10, he says, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. I don't want to get off too much on a rabbit trail, but one of the things that I've learned is knowing Christ doesn't exempt us from suffering. It doesn't exclude us from hard times. And so as we get to know Jesus Christ and we accept Him as our personal Savior, we come to know who He is, what He has to offer for us. He says, come unto me, all ye that are burdened, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He tells us that He's the way, the truth, and the life. He says He never leaves us, He never forsakes us, and there's so many promises that we have because of Jesus Christ. Jesus promises us the opportunity to know God in a personal way. Do you know Him this evening? Are you seeking to know Him better through Jesus Christ? You see, we don't get to know Jesus Christ better because we are reading the newspaper. We need to know Jesus better because we're around people who read the Bible. We get to know Jesus better because we open the Word and we hear from Him. Far more important than reading about medical situations or sports or hobbies or anything else is to know and to seek to know Jesus Christ in a real and experiential way. To me, as I think about the Apostle Paul, an assassin of Christians, literally, he goes from an, a murderer of Christians to a person who says, I'm willing to throw it all away for Jesus. You know why he did that? Because he got to know who Jesus was. He personally came to know who Jesus was and who he had to, or what he had to offer him. You know, this evening you may know Jesus Christ as Savior, and that's wonderful. But did you know that we will never know this side of heaven, all there is to know about who Jesus is? Well, that should be a driving, and we see that in Paul's life, should be a driving force in our lives to get to know Jesus and who He is. Also, we see in this passage not only the right standing with God, not only knowing God in a more intimate way, but we see through Jesus Christ is really the only way to have access to true power. You see verse number 10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I ask myself, what kind of power is that? I've seen dynamite blow up some things. That's pretty powerful. I've seen some political figures in the news and so forth that have a lot of power and a lot of sway. But power to raise someone from the dead? That is power that no one else has. No one can offer you that kind of power. And Paul says, Jesus Christ is the only one who has the ability to give us access to power to be what we ought to be and do what we ought to do. The power of God, in verse number 11, he goes on to say, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. You see, Jesus Christ here, this passage is not talking about resurrection from the, from, uh, in the sense of the second coming. We're talking about resurrection. It's a very specific word. He's talking about the idea of being taken from a state of deadness, of inability to do anything, and given life. How does a, a, a murderer go from murdering people that are Christians, like Paul did, to living for Jesus Christ? He was resurrected. From his state. He was quickened from his trespasses and sin, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2. You see, that, that is such a blessing to me as a missionary, and it should be to each one of us who know Christ. God has the power to raise us out of that condition of useless to God, of full of sin and trespasses and going our own ways. The power of God is so great. And Paul says, you know what? My desire is to live constantly in a state of life and not of deadness because of sin and following my own flesh. I'm thankful to the Lord that He uses us if we are willing to walk in His power. Amen. Praise God that it's not Nathan Ring that has to go out there and do the work. It's the Spirit of God that works. 
And I love this passage because when you look at verse number 12, Paul tells us he hadn't arrived. He says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. If anybody I could think of in the scriptures, of course, Jesus Christ was perfect, but any of the human people there, Peter, Paul, John, if anyone, I would think Paul had arrived. And you look at all the missions work that he did and all the word of God that he wrote, and yet he says, I haven't gotten there yet. But I have one purpose in life. I'm going to press forward. Verse 13, he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, to have arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul portrays to us and shows us what we can do and how we can live in such a way to make a difference. You have to have a right standing in God that only comes through Jesus Christ. You have to know Him and continually seek to know Him in an intimate way, and that only comes through Christ. You need power to overcome your own flesh and sin and the, and the devil and the world that we live in, and that only comes through Jesus Christ. But praise God, it comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is sufficient. And here as we look at this passage, he says, you know what? I haven't arrived. But my life's goal is to keep pursuing what Jesus Christ died to save me to do to keep living for Jesus Christ, to keep sharing the gospel. He's not dependent on logic. He's not dependent on his own human ability. He is depending on Jesus Christ. Amen. Very simply this evening, what do you have to gain by Jesus Christ? Well, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior this evening, Jesus Christ is the only one that can make you right with God. He's the only way to have a relationship personally with Christ. Maybe this evening majority know Jesus Christ as your Savior, what do you have to gain from Christ? You have to gain from Christ a more intimate knowledge of who God is. You have to gain from Christ the power needed to live this week, to be the witness that God wants you to be right here in Lawrence or wherever in this area you may live. God has enabled us to serve in Brazil, and anything that's happened is to His glory, not to ours. But you know what? As I share the gospel of Jesus Christ with folks, I find until they understand who Jesus is and from His Word what He has to offer, they're not interested in accepting or living or seeking out Jesus Christ. But when you get a hold of the fact that Jesus Christ saved you from your sins, that He gives you something that you can get nowhere else, that He can make you know personally who God is, that He can enable you to do what He wants, it transforms lives. And to me, as I look at that mechanic shop and I think about the, the work there, I, I just think about exactly what happened. As people one by one realized who Jesus was and they compared it what they're hearing in this cult, and they realized, you know what, Jesus is the truth, just like He said He was. And turn their back on that. And one of the things I found out almost a year or so into the study, I, they didn't tell me till later, was that those folks from that cult, at some point, they came back to the mechanic shop one weekday and they said, what happened to you all? Why did you leave? And to the best of their ability, those folks that accepted Christ as Savior, they said, we accepted Christ. We turned to Christ. That's what missions work's all about. Showing people who Jesus is through a daily walk with Him. Showing the power of Christ in our own life as we surrender our wills to His. And getting to know Him personally through His Word. You can be a missionary right here. You can show other people. You can give people a desire through the way you live, through the, your gospel witness, a desire to know Jesus. And my question is, are you? Am I? Are we each day showing people why they cannot live without Jesus? He says, I am pressing towards the mark. I am pushing towards that goal. Until the day God takes me home, I am going to live to magnify Jesus Christ. Why? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made righteousness of God. The righteousness that only comes through Jesus Christ. 
You think about that intimate knowledge with Christ in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3. He says, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And you think about the power of God, I think so often of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, where it says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God can make you, Jesus can make you right with God, give you a personal knowledge of who God is, a personal relationship and power. Everything should literally be viewed as a loss in comparison to the privilege it is to have a personal relationship with God in flesh, Jesus Christ. When you get to know Jesus, you just want to get to know Him more. And the more you get to know Him, the more you find out that more, the more He has to offer than anything else around. What do you have to gain from Jesus this evening? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the opportunity just to open it and briefly challenge our hearts with a few thoughts about who Jesus is and what he has to offer us. I don't know who here, who's here this evening, but you do, Lord. If there's someone who doesn't know you as Savior, I pray you'd work in their hearts. I pray you'd just challenge believers afresh and anew that they have something to offer to those around them, and that's the person of Jesus Christ. Help each one of us, Lord, to share what Jesus has to offer to those around us. Lord, help us to be faithful. Use us as you see fit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Stand tonight as musicians.